You assemble enough nice bikes, people will come to there. And if I can do it in a facility like this, I'll do it a hundred times a year if I could. have people from all over the world coming coming to these auctions because of the, uh, the quality of the uh, uh, of the auction items. I think it's pretty cool. You have pretty diverse um, uh, selection of motorcycles that are for sale. There's high end, low end. It's about time they brought, you know, a national auction to the East Coast. This museum is, you know, fantastic, unbelievable, brings more people in. We came here a year ago and I looked at the venue and normally I have to rent these large halls. I got to bring in all the decorations, all the lights, I got to bring in all the banners just to make it look like it's a motorcycle joint. This is gravy. I walk in, I set my bikes down, I put up my stage, and it's ready to go. This is a 1955 C&E Argyle Scoopery. This is a 1982 Harley Davidson XLS Roadster. It's believed to be a 25th anniversary. Number 111, 1963 on the CB77. The 1960s Ross Barracuda GT Bicycle. Number 101, which is number one. Again, Mick, this is the Western. It's a real dual The 1971 Triumph TR. 6R Tiger. This is a 1940 safety cycle motor scooter. Seven. This is a 1972 Yamaha DS7. This is a 1959 Matchless G80. This is from an important motorcycle collection. This is a 61 Harley Davidson XLH sold on a bill of sale. There was only 2014 X lot number 112. This is a 1974 Yamaha TZ 250B. Take it away. There it is. Buying your Vincent. Out of the the black shadow. You get about the out of the the It was a lovely day to ride up here from Bedford, which I rode up in another one of my BMWs, and now I'm going to go home with another one, and I don't quite know how to get it there. For the first time around, for a first event, it turned out absolutely wonderful. We sold more motorcycles than anticipated, and uh, it went real well. It's good to see everybody out here.